Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Try out fairy schemes up next. Alright, so our commander, Alela, Artful, Provocateur, 4 mana, 2, 3, Flying, Death Touch, Lifelink, other creatures we control with Flying get plus 1 plus 0, and whenever we cast an artifact or enchantment spell, we get to make a 1 1 blue fairy creature token with Flying. So the Esper colors seem to have a pretty big theme revolving around casting and controlling artifacts and enchantments, often both at the same time. So not surprised to see that theme uh, represented in our commander. So let's take a look at our entire list here. At one mana we've got Witching Well, new addition. One mana artifacts, when it enters the battlefield we get to scry two. Four mana to sacrifice it and draw two cards. So nice card filtering. We've got Bag of Holding to give us a bit more card selection. And if we sacrifice a bag, some card advantage. And Scrabbling Claws as Graveyard Hate that we can also sacrifice to draw a card. At 2 mana we've got Corridor, Monitor, 2 mana 1-4, untaps an artifact or a creature when it enters battlefield, so can have some neat applications. We've got All That Glitters, 2 mana enchantments for a creature, giving it plus 1 plus 1 for each artifact and or enchantment we control. Don't know if we have many hexproof creatures in this deck, I know there's like the Shimmer Dragon that can gain hexproof if we control enough artifacts. We've got Frogify as one of our removal spells, pretty flavorful, turning a creature into a 1-1 frog. We've got Arcane Signet, as in every commander deck here. Golden Egg, draws a card, can filter mana or gain a bit of life, and the artifact of course is useful. So this also can fit into a lot of different strategies. Guild Globe, pretty similar. And then at 3 mana we get Animating Fairy, which is one of the adventure cards, can turn a non-creature artifact we control into a 4-4 creature essentially, putting 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. So that's the adventure half that we can cast from our hands, and then afterwards we can still cast a 3 mana 2-2 two -two flyer, or we can just cast a 3 mana 2-2 two -two flyer to begin with. So that's pretty neat. And we get Empyrean Eagle, since we do have a bit of a flying theme going on with Alela, so this uh, fits in nicely as well. We've got Shine Chaser, 3 mana 1 1, Flying Vigilance, gets plus 1 plus 1 as long as we control an artifact, and plus 1 plus 1 as long as we control an enchantment. So, fits the theme pretty well as well. We get Mace of the Valiants, this was also in the Knights deck. Seems okay if we can make some tokens with Alela to pump up the Mace, but it is pretty mana intensive to get it going. Prison Realm has good removal. Winged Words, 2 mana draw 2 if we control a flyer. Law Mage's Binding, Flash, Enchanted Creature can't attack or block, and Activated Abilities can be activated. Not a great answer to a lot of the commanders, since they often have like a static ability that still applies, but uh, still good removal for other stuff. A Mortify to destroy a creature or enchantment at instant speed. A Heraldic Banner to both ramp and pump our creatures. Mana Geode just to ramp. Then at 4 mana... Arcanist's Owl, 3-3 three, three Flyer, when it enters the battlefield, look at the top 4 cards of your library, reveal an artifact or enchantment card, put it into your hand, and the rest goes on the bottom. So, nice bit of card advantage. Angelic Exaltation goes well with the Go White theme from the tokens we can generate, giving an attacking creature plus X plus X, where X is the number of creatures we control. Conclave Tribunal has more removal. Smothering Tithe can generate a ton of treasure tokens that also synergize well with the rest of the deck. Chemist's Insight to draw some cards. Kaya's Wrath as a powerful sweeper. And then Massacre Girl. We've been on the receiving end of Massacre Girl in one of our games, and it was pretty devastating. And then some 6 mana cards. Shimmer Dragon, 5-6 Flyer. Hexproof as long as we control 4 or more artifacts. And we can tap two untapped artifacts to draw a card, so quite powerful too. We've got Blood Soaked Altar to go with our token theme. Banish into Fable, 6 mana instance. When we cast a spell from our hand, we can copy it if we control an artifact, and then copy it again if we control an enchantment, and choose new targets for the copies. 
And what the card actually does is return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. And we get to make a 2-2 white knight creature token with vigilance. So pretty strange card. But uh, if we can get the full effect, bounce 3 permanents and make 3 knights for 6 mana is not bad. And it's even instant speed. So we can also kind of like bounce a few of the opponent's permanents, a few of our permanents to maybe re-trigger enter battlefield abilities or save a creature from removal. So it's pretty versatile. And then Sephara, pretty powerful too. Probably not going to be playing Sephara for 1 mana too often in this deck, but it's definitely possible. But still 7 mana, 7-7, seven, seven, flying a lifelink is pretty strong, giving other flyers indestructible. And then last but not least, Workshop Elders, 7 mana, 4-4. Four, four. Artifact creatures we control have flying, and at the beginning of combat we get to make an artifact into a 4-4 creature, pretty similar to the animating fairy. So that's also quite strong. And then our mana base. Watery Grave is the only shock land, and then a bunch of tap lands in the different colors. Let's take a look at the basic lands. Take a look at the new arts. Love this uh, well. Or John Avon Islands, beautiful too. All right, well, let's give this a spin. All right, we're on the play. And what do we think of this hand? Play a bunch of artifacts, draw some cards. It's not amazing, but I mean, these two cards can basically represent anything. So we just get to add a bunch of artifacts to the board right away and hopefully draw into something useful. Is that good enough? We're pretty far from casting Sephara. So we might be able to do better. All right, pretty similar hands, but we replaced the artifacts with a Law Mage's Binding and an Eagle. So I guess I'll keep. We'll need to draw another blue or black source before we can cast Alela, since we drew three of our basic planes. And Knight of the Ebon Legion out of the Knight's deck, so that's a scary card. All right, might have to Law Mage's Binding it. So I think the plan is going to be turn 3, Binding, turn 4, Alela. Take it from there. We're lacking some artifacts to synergize with Alela. We could wait to play the Binding after Alela to get the token, but I think I want to deal with the Knights while we can. I still think the Knight of Abel Legion is a bigger problem than Bell, even though Bell is also pretty good. Alright, Exaltation can trigger Alela here. And once we make a few flyers, I could maybe cast Sephara in a timely fashion. Alright, let's put it in the command zone. So we'll have to wait a bit on Alila. Just play an eagle for now. And then next turn I could just cast a dragon, 5-6 flyer, which will also get plus one plus one from the eagle. Colossus Hammer is scary as soon as they play Sir Gwyn, as they can equip it for free. Alright, so interesting choice. I could play the Guild Gate, which will let me play Sephara next turn. Uh, I could just play Alela again, which is probably better than Dragon. Yeah, I think I'll do that. And I'm not planning on uh, double blocking. Hit for three here. Deny to draw a card. They might have tapped their mana slightly awkwardly here since now they can't actually cast it for one mana. Never mind. A Godless Shrine untapped. So they might have taken two damage unnecessarily. Alright, so I mean, I can just cast Sephara here, which seems pretty strong. I think I'll go for it. A 
Tank for six. Opponents will be able to play Sir Gwyn and equip the Colossus Hammer, so that's a lot of damage coming in. But a lifelinking Sephara can make up for it. They're gonna mortify instead. It's too bad. Well, at least we're not uh, taking a beating from a Colossus Hammer quite yet. Shining Armor put onto Bell. Down to 17 we go. And a Conclave Tribunal. So we've got some options. If I play Angelic Exaltation, I get a token from Alela. And I can use that token to convoke out the Conclave Tribunal. Although, if I Conclave Tribunal one of the things in play, I won't have an answer for Sir Gwyn. But maybe I can just plan to kill them in the meantime. Yeah, Conclaving the Hammer seems reasonable. Let's tap our mana like a civilized person here. And then next turn we should be able to attack for lethal. I guess I probably should have just attacked with Alela and kept the Eagle back since I had the Exaltation, giving plus four plus four. So I could have gotten in one extra point of damage and also gained four extra life. So that was definitely a mistake. Think we'll be okay. Bond to tap our creatures and gain some life. It's not gonna cut it. And Banner should seal the deal here. We'll name blue. Alright, sweet. That went pretty well. Order of the Midnight unlocked. Well, we completed the event, but I'll still play another game with uh, fairy schemes here at least. On the play, not the most exciting hand. Turn 2 Egg, turn 3 Realm. Uh, I can use the Egg for fixing to play a turn 4 Alila, and then a Massacre Girl later. I guess I'll try it. Could take the free Mulligan to try our luck. But uh, this is probably still above average. Emergence zone, didn't even notice this in the lands. A guild gate, so we can just play that next turn. It's unlikely that I need to prison realm right away. Opponent's got a tough choice here. It's gonna be a corpse knight. Um, I could save the mace for after Alila, but it makes sense to play the mace. So it can start accumulating some counters. So I can sacrifice the egg next turn to make black mana. So I can play Alela on curve. So I think that's okay. Also then I might not have double black for Massacre Girl, so there's a bit of downside to doing that. Shambling suit. Yeah, let's just play Alela. Hopefully she can stick around for a turn. And then we've got more artifacts and enchantments to follow up with. Oh yeah, can't wait until we get to play our own Brawl decks. Definitely looking forward to it. Now Layla eats Mortify, sadly. So we'll need Massacre Girl to catch us back up here since we're pretty far behind. I 
and draw row mortify. I mean, I guess this technically blocks okay, so I'll play this for now. Three mana to equip, so could do that next turn. Am I doing a 24-hour stream for Eldraine release? That's very likely. So, if that's something Chad would like uh, to see, well, let me know. We've done two 24-hour streams, or close to 24 hours at least, for the past two releases. And they were pretty fun, so... Wouldn't mind doing another one. Ooh, our opponents made a grave mistake. They added a one toughness creature to the board. So now the Massacre Girl could lead to a true massacre, although we're missing the second Black Source here, going back to the decision of uh, sacrificing the Golden Egg and the mana base in the deck not being ideal. So now what to do? How much damage am I taking next turn? So if they were to pump this twice, that's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, I would be dead. So I might just have to Prison Realm, and then the Scry can also help me set up something useful with uh, trying to find a second Black Source. We'll start with the Prison Realm here. And get rid of Knight of Ammo Legion, I think. Claws doesn't cut it. And then ideally I keep this for their commander. Sir Conrad, I guess I can kill instead. Although, Conrad would die as well to Massacre Girl if I top deck a swamp. So it all comes down to whether or not I can draw the swamp here. So what happens if I don't draw the swamp and I mortify Sir Conrad, then I'm still dead. So if we're all in on top decking swamp anyway, then there's no point in mortifying. Unless I were to mortify, let's say, Corpse Knight here, and then I can play Alela as a blocker. Or I can mortify Sir Conrad, and then Alela can also block technically. And I guess I'm not 100% dead. It's close here. I could mortify Sir Conrad. Which would be the play that can keep me alive if um, I just play Alela next turn. The winning play might just be to hope to get lucky. Yeah, I think I'm all in here since Massacre Girl. Minus one, minus one. Minus two, minus two. Minus three, minus three. And then this would also shrink, so this would die, and then this dies, so yeah. Everything would die, basically. Wow, what a top deck. We're still in the game, but at two life, so can't feel too comfortable. The Mardu deck does play Sky Knight Legionnaire. Well, that does it too. GG's. So yeah, the emergency zone didn't do us any favors that game. I personally would not put uh, emergency zone in my three color deck. But so it goes, gotta play the pre-constructed decks the way they're built. Alright, that was fun, got to play through all the different decks, two games each. And uh, yeah, overall I was most impressed with the Wild Bounty deck. So that seemed to be the best performing. The Fairy Schemes deck I've heard good things about it and overall seems to have the highest win percentage. But uh, yeah, I think if I had to rank them, Wild Bounty and Fairy Schemes, followed by Savage Hunter, followed by Knight's Charge, but it doesn't mean that you can't win games with Knight's Charge like we did, so all the decks are definitely playable, even if some might be better than others. So that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.